And we are back on WGN TV Political Report, shifting now to the other side of the race for the 11th Congressional District seat, Republican Catalina Law. She joins me this morning to talk about her campaign. Thank you for coming in. Appreciate you. Thank you so much. So having. you were born and raised in Woodstock, second generation Latin America, mom and grandma being legal immigrants from Guatemala, and um, your mom worked three jobs, dad's an entrepreneur. You were homeschooled. It's an interesting background. Yes. You know, we, uh, my mother came here from Guatemala. My grandmother picked coffee beans at eight years old, uh, and they came to the United States to find freedom and opportunity. And uh, likewise, my father, who was born and raised in Chicago, small business owner, and both embodied just the example of the American dream. And they taught me the values of hard work, personal responsibility, and to love this country unapologetically. And running for office to me is a civic duty because I see that American dream under attack today. I know you do some consulting with a baby formula company now. You're all about <laughs> entrepreneurship. Uh, you want to foster small businesses. What exactly is that role? And yes. talk about that. Uh, my sister and I started our business, Begin Health, uh, from the kitchen table. Uh, we've grown exponentially. We joke around. We help kids poop. So constipation <laughs> is a huge issue for uh, children nowadays. And so we are helping uh, where it begins in the gut microbiome uh, to help kids in the constipation uh, phases of life and even adults. Look for you on Shark Tank. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the economy a little bit. No question, inflation is high. We're seeing it in gas prices and other goods. What can Congress do to control inflation? And if you're elected, what do you propose to help the economy? First and foremost, uh, balance the budget and stop spending taxpayer money. Stop providing uh, billions of dollars in foreign aid when people here back home are suffering. Uh, it was government who shut down businesses. And we must enact pro-growth policies that are going to impact not only small to medium-sized businesses, startups, bigger businesses that employ uh, the American workforce, but also get the economy moving. And Congress has control uh, of the purse. And we must select people that are focusing on pro-growth economic initiatives instead of regressive economic policies. People here in Illinois are hurting right now when it comes to inflation, when it comes to high gas prices. And we need to ensure that we have have some relief at the federal level and that's really my job as Illinoisans are hurting here they need to send someone to Congress that can really fight for them. We're going to talk about a lot of these issues, but I, one of the things that sort of, you know, merged its head uh, in this election is the abortion issue. Your opponent has zeroed in on abortion as a key issue. Um, you favor limited government, and so I'm sort of curious what that looks like with regard to your view on abortion. If, if Republicans take over Congress, for example, would you vote for a national ban that Lindsey Graham is proposing over in the Senate? First and foremost, uh, to say that women, as my opponent has mentioned before, only care about one issue, is a gross miscalculation on the female electorate. You know, there are many moms and parent, and, and women especially who are all struggling from an economic perspective. Uh, when it comes to that particular issue, I do not believe in late-term abortion. Uh, Illinois has some of the most extremist laws, including late-term abortion, which the majority of people actually do not support. And not to mention uh, consent laws here. Uh, there are talks of allowing uh, women on under the age of 18, girls under the age of 18, to have abortions without parental uh, notification. Those two issues uh, I do have a, a, an issue with. However, this is all, those laws are already enacted at a state level. And the priority of this Congress, uh, when the Republicans do take the House back, will be the economic issues, will be things like immigration reform, will be things like safe and secure communities. And I'm committed to focusing on that at a federal issue because those are things that I can have impact on. Uh, just to button it up, but if a, a bill did come, come, it's in the Senate. So if an abortion bill, uh, say at 15 weeks, came into the House, would you say leave it to the states or would you say, no, let us Congress speak to that? I would leave it to the states. Okay. Um, crime, also a big issue, obviously, in all the polls. What can Congress do and what you, would you do to help fight crime? Background checks, limits on weapons like assault weapons. I mean, d does any of that serve a purpose? Look at Chicago. We have some of the toughest uh, gun laws, and still nobody can pinpoint uh, why the crime continues to increase. It is a cultural issue. It's also a political issue. And until the politics is taken out of it, until we support our law enforcement, until we are strong on crime. You know, here in, in Cook County, 
uh, you know, Kim Fox wasn't even prosecuting people who deserve to be prosecuted. If we are not principled on our approach to violence and understand that it is not Republican or Democrat, this is about the safety and security of our communities, uh, our country will be lost. Not to mention our communities out in the exurbs are also already experiencing high crime rates because of the lack of accountability from, from the Cook County uh, Democrats. That's an issue. What can I do? Not only be a strong voice supporting law enforcement. You know, the Democrats in Congress right now, my opponent, for example, has been supported by organizations that want to defund the police. That, to me, is not leadership. That is not somebody that supports. So it's a cultural issue in conversation. But also, if we need to provide resources to make sure that Illinois 11th is safe, I am absolutely willing to do that to make sure our communities are going to be safe. And so let me just get your reaction. The House passed nearly $2 billion in grants to help police departments hire officers, invest in new technology. President Biden signed a budget that calls for another $35 billion in support of law enforcement and crime prevention. What aren't they doing? Why are they continuing to vilify our law enforcement? What they're also not doing is focusing on the chaos at the border. That is also a reason why we're seeing crime increase in our communities. Our border is in complete chaos. Uh, we have labor, drug, sex trafficking. We have a fentanyl issue, pandemic uh, epidemic impacting our country. And where are Congress members like Bill Foster? They are completely silent on those issues. They are only supportive of law enforcement when it is politically convenient for them, not always. And that is an issue to me. So let me pick up on immigration. You yourself have said it's uh, ridiculous that we Illinoisans are forced to foot the bill, especially during turbulent economic times, your words. Uh, the migrants who are entering the country now from Venezuela and some other countries are coming in legally. They're playing by the rules. So should border states have to deal with this completely? I guess I'm wondering whether or not the states for legal migrants who come in, should states like Illinois kind of help out, handle our fair share of those folks? Our immigration system is completely broken. And the fact that we have over 200,000 people crossing the border uh, month over month is a huge issue. Our border states, of course, uh, they should be, they're, they're there. But we need to support from a law enforcement perspective. We need to make sure that these border states have the resources from a federal level to combat uh, the illegal immigration. And it, it, Illinois is a border state at this point, even being in the Midwest, because we are footing the bill. And we sh our Illinoisans should not be responsible for uh, the illegal immigration. We need to make sure that people who want to come here legally, uh, we focus on immigration reform and prioritize those people and make sure that we uh, have a safe and secure border and we stop the crisis there. One of the issues that the Supreme Court will face uh, this year uh, is about rights of LGBTQ communities. I'm curious just to touch base on the same-sex marriage issue for you because over the House, the, oh, sorry, over the summer, uh, the House passed a bill codified uh, the right to same-sex marriage. Some Republicans voted for that. Where do you stand? I believe our party is a big tent party, and I believe that when it comes to economy, liberty, everybody wants that. Everybody wants a, a chance, and those are the issues that we uh, are focusing on. So you would support same-sex marriage in Congress? Yeah. Okay. Um, you also said our, our founders made it clear that rights of people are given by the creator, uh, should not be taken away by man. When it comes to, say, free speech, for example, I'm sort of curious, are there any limits that are acceptable? You can't go into a theater and yell fire, right? So what kind of limits are acceptable? If our founders didn't want big government, they certainly didn't want big corporations uh, controlling our individual liberties. When you have these big tech companies who are censoring one side on purpose or kicking off, let's say, the leader of the free world, but allowing somebody like the Ayatollah of Iran to continue to post his comments, that to me is, is not objective. That to me is politically motivated. We must ensure that both sides have a fair chance of speaking out in their views so that the people can ultimately decide uh, what they want, wh how they interpret whatever those opinions are. And right now it has become so politically motivated that our uh, First Amendment is under attack by big corporations. Catalina Love, so many questions, so little time. Thank you for coming <laughs> in and spending some time with me. Thank you so much. On this much. Sunday morning. Coming up next on WGN TV Political Report, we're going to go to Washington. The latest from the January 6th Select Committee. Will former President Trump testify under oath? Stay with us.